Welcome back to another episode of Footy and Coffee Conversations. Hope you guys are ready for today's guest. Should be a good one. Should be interesting and exciting to hear her career and about U.S. women's soccer as a whole. Hi. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. You have coffee? I do, and it's in my Jersey Mike's mug because we are sponsored by Jersey Mike's, and they're actually the best ever. Oh, nice. What what type of coffee? What flavor style? Um, It's just regular coffee, but I like to put caramel cream in it. Okay. okay. I prefer cappuccinos, but I just decided to make it here. I usually go out because Portland has, like, the best coffee shops. They do. They do. That's what they're known for. I hear they also have good donut shops. Yes. What is your favorite Portland donut coffee shop? Well, if I'm going to go coffee, it's going to be a Sterling coffee shop. Um, but, like, it's so hard because every coffee shop's good. So, like, honestly, you could go to, like, ten different ones, and they're all amazing. Um, and then my favorite donut shop is Blue Star. Okay. I'll have yeah. to check that out sometime. I yeah. love donuts. That's my that's my guilty pleasure. I mean, everybody loves Voodoo because it's like a really cool experience, and like their donuts like are good. But Blue Star has like the best donut. Making me hungry. I know. All right, so uh, to start, if you just want to introduce yourself, where you're playing, um, what position you are. Okay. Um, I'm Kelly Hubley. Um, I play for the Portland Thorns. This is going to be my fourth year with them. Um, I'm a defender. I play outside back, center back. I like outside back more, but I play both. But yeah. What? What? What about outside back? Do you like more? Um, I like attacking. So yeah, I get to the forward. Field. Yeah. So playing outside back lets me like still attack, but I really do like defending too. So it's kind of best of both worlds. Yeah, that allows you to get some get some into the attack instead of just standing at half waiting to, to yeah. see the ball come back. It's so boring sometimes. You're just like stuck and like outside back you're allowed to then go up at times, so it helps. I know. The the problem is in your in a team's best game when you're dominating as a center back it's so boring. Because you don't so get too much action. You're better catching the ball, like you don't even feel like you're running in the game. Yeah. And then when you get the ball it's like you just give it to your defensive mid, and that's it. And you just it's watch like the rest of it. Touch passing. You're not doing anything special. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's that's why I excelled at it. I was willing to just be bored. So <laughs> once you touch, keep it small. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So uh, to start, we'll just kind of go through your career, how you uh, from your youth up until now at Portland. Um, just some experiences through that, and then we'll ask some questions of different things that people wanted to know about you and your career. Okay. So if you want to start just with youth career, where you grew up playing, um, how you decided to play in college, that type of thing. Cool. So I'm from the Northwest suburbs of Chicago. So I have three siblings and two of them are older. So when they were all doing like 3v3 in the summer, they put all the younger siblings on a team. So we started at like, three or four like on a team in like these little three to three tournaments like we were super young like as soon as we could start and so I basically just played soccer because my older siblings played soccer and I started to like like it more and more so I started doing like travel teams and I played for soccer's FC Chicago and I started there when I was like probably eight like super young and I played with soccer's like all through up until college and we did like regional team like we did i did odp so i did regional team national team all that sort of stuff and um high school like went to elk grove high school which is in the suburbs um and then college i think my first college visit was my sophomore year of high school oh wow so super young yeah yeah um women's soccer for some reason you kind of commit early I think earlier than most guys too. And so I committed my junior year in September. Cause oh, I that's tore that's early. Yeah, I tore my ACL the weekend before, uh, or the weekend after I committed too. Oh, wow. Good thing you committed then. <laughs> 
I know. I was like, I called my like college coach like a week later, and I was like, oh, I was so scared. I was like, they're not gonna want me anymore. But since it was like such a long time away, like it, everything worked out fine. Yeah, yeah, that um, gives you enough time to heal from it and all. Yeah, for sure. So that I ended up, yeah, that happened my junior year, and like I was back like in like six months, so it was like no issue, um, which is nice. But it was kind of a bummer. Um, yeah. And then I'm trying to think more younger. I did like a lot of just like regional national team stuff, like region, I don't even know. We did like stuff at DeKalb, I think, at NIU. And then um, that's kind of where I started to be more serious with soccer because I also played basketball. And so my family's actually a really big basketball family. Like both my brothers played basketball in college. My dad played basketball in college. So like it was kind of like picking like, do I choose soccer or basketball? And at that point, like, I was just having more fun at soccer, um, even though I really love basketball. Um, so I think my freshman year, I decided that I needed to just stick to one sport. And so that's when I stuck to soccer, because I would miss basketball practice for soccer, or miss mm -hmm. soccer practice for basketball, and it was just getting, like, to be too much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so then I just stuck to soccer and, like, really decided to, like, dedicate. Like, I really enjoyed it, so I really just – love going to practice like love being with my friends because that was kind of like the biggest thing like my team my college not my college team, my team and club was super close so it just made it so much more fun because we get to go to all these tournaments together and when you're older your parents don't go anymore oh uh, those are the best <laughs> so you're all just like rooming together and like we would play like gatorade pong like in the hotels like we didn't know what we were doing but we would like flirt with other boys teams like when we go to like a waitress like we thought it was so funny we thought we were so cool but it kind of just makes you want to play more yeah I, I i have to look back at those tournaments and think like how late we were staying up and then playing three <laughs> games on a saturday how bad that was for our bodies no we're just it's like we were just doing like ridiculous things like we just had picked like we bring all of our cameras and like when i look back at photo albums i'm just like what were we doing <laughs> <laughs> so then so you commit um and then where did you commit to i committed to the university of kentucky and was that partly due to being a basketball family and the the heritage of basketball at kentucky <laughs> Honestly, like, I didn't even, like, know anything about Kentucky until my first visit there. And, like, the basketball thing was awesome because when we went to, like, the basketball games, like, that was kind of, like, their hook was, like, you would come during the basketball weekend. Okay, that's and, like, how they got you. Yeah, and, like, Rupp Arena is just insane. Like, I brought my dad. He was like, this is amazing. Um, so, like, I didn't really realize how big they were until, like, I actually went there. But, like, that was obviously a big reason. But... I just, it's such a big sports school and they like just have the best facilities. And that's kind of what like lured me in was just like how much they gave to their student athletes and like all the facilities there are just like unreal and they keep rebuilding, which is awesome. Um, so that's kind of like what it was and just knowing that their, the direction of where their program was going was on an up. So that's kind of like why I committed there. And you, you had a lot of success there. If I remember looking, it was like 68 games, 10 goals. Yeah, I yeah, that's when I was a forward. So <laughs> started out as a forward there. And I yeah, like I was freshman, all SEC. Like I had like a great time there. Um, my sophomore year is when I started playing outside back. Like I started as a forward and like Was that was that your first time playing as a defender? Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. So they moved me to outside back for like I don't know, like half to three fourths of the season and I was like, What am I doing? Like I, they, I don't understand, like, the line. Like, I was never looking at the other defenders. So, like, someone had to tell me, like, get up, like, stay up. Oh, so, um, that's kind of when I started as an outside back. And, like, I really had fun with it. And then we had, like, pretty good seasons when I was there. My junior year, we went to the Sweet 16. Um, funny story. We played Virginia. And someone that I played with, Emily Sonnet, a lot of people know her. She's on the national team. She was actually at Virginia when we played in that game. And we lost 7-0. <laughs> and the funniest thing is when I, like, came to Portland, we were talking about that game. And she's like, oh, yeah, my dad was talking about how that game was, like, border my borderline manslaughter. And I'm just like, yeah, okay. that was my team. <laughs> that's, her, that's her memory of competing against you guys. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, cool. Thank you. Oh. That makes me feel good. <laughs> oh, gosh. Brutal. 
Um, yeah. So then, then you go to your your junior year, right? That was, that was, that was my junior year. That was junior year. Yeah. Okay. And then what happened at that point? Um. So after my junior year, um, I decided. Well, I came back from. So after season, it was winter. I came back and. Uh, I was, like, having health issues, but didn't know I was having health issues. So I kind of just took a step back from the team. And um, because, like, I wasn't technically fit enough to be, like, on the team. And, like, no one knew that I had health issues going on. And it wasn't until I came home for summer that I realized, like, I had really bad health issues. And I wasn't actually supposed to be working out for, like, months. And so that's when I also decided that I was going to transfer. So going into your senior year, like kind of scared to transfer, but I was actually just going to transfer and go to school. Like I wasn't really focused on going to like another soccer school. So um, I decided to like pick somewhere close to home and in Chicago, it was between DePaul, which is where I ended up. And then Loyola, Chicago, because my sister went there. So it's kind of just close to home. It's in the city. Like I wanted to be in the city. Um, And I was just going to go to school to like go to school, but I ended up being able to get a scholarship also. So I was like, okay, like, I'll just play my senior year for fun and just have a good time. Like, kind of remember why I, like, loved soccer in the beginning. Like, I wasn't planning on playing pro. So long story short, like, I ended up having, like, an autoimmune disorder. So I had to get my thyroid removed. And I had to end up redshirting because of me not being able to work out with my thyroid condition. And so once I got it removed, like, within a week, I was able to get back to, like, normal exercise. So I got it removed my actual senior year, like during like winter break, like Thanksgiving, I think. So then I had like my whole next year to like get back into playing and like have a good last year. Okay. So I um, ended up at DePaul, which was awesome. Like amazing school, definitely not a sports school like Kentucky, yeah. but it was still like fun experience. Cause like I'm in the city, like I'm a city girl. Like I was not a Kentucky like <laughs> country girl (laughs) um so it's like a better fit for me but I ended up like loving soccer again and that's kind of why I'm playing pro now because of my experience there so yeah what was the what was the biggest difference between going from Kentucky then to DePaul soccer wise um soccer wise it was like pretty more it was like way more laid back um like we still like worked hard every day like we had goals like we wanted to be the best we could be like our team was really good um when I was there like like almost like I don't even know what we ended up being but we had a great team so the biggest was just like facilities since you're in the city you don't have the same space yeah yeah so like our field I don't know if people know DePaul but it's this field is literally off the train like the train goes like above the field and it's like in between like four buildings so it's and it's a turf field that you share with the um the softball team so going from like Bermuda grass like to training fields like in a game field like Kentucky to like okay this little turf field in the middle of like the train and four buildings was different and like you kind of you shared everything at DePaul like we had one weight room one locker room it was kind of crazy but it was worth it like for me yeah So then, so you finish your senior year, um, and then is professional soccer the goal at that point? Um, so it wasn't really a goal until, like, season ended, and I kind of was like, wait, like, I'm not done yet, like, I keep, I want to keep playing, and so that's kind of, like, when I decided, like, okay, maybe I do want to play after this, like, do I have a chance of even playing after this, and basically, it was not even decided until like around the draft i'm like i'm just gonna throw my name to the draft and like see what happens like i didn't end up getting drafted because in women's soccer like only 40 people get drafted which yeah is, it's like, not a high number so i was like okay like if something happens i'll do it but if not then whatever that's fine but i ended up getting a call from the portland coach and he wanted me to come in for preseason so i was like okay like i might as well just try and that's kind of like how i got to go but it was so hard for me to leave like i struggled so hard because I was like what am I doing what am I getting myself into yeah so it was a it was hard for me but it was awesome and that was that was uh 2017 correct yes okay 
So you end up going there. Um, what was your initial experience? Uh, obviously, then that's a big jump uh, yeah. to Portland Thorns from DePaul. I mean, and Portland Thorns is kind of uh, legendary for their, their fan base and support that they have as a club. So what was, what was that like? What was that, uh, that experience? It was like the most wild experience. Like, I just remember the first day of preseason. Like, here I am, like, I took, like, almost a whole year off of soccer before going to DePaul. So, like, I still wasn't, like, in my prime, as you would say. Mm -hmm. And I, in college, like, I was just, like, faster than people. So I didn't really have, like, the best technical ability. And I got, got there. And my first training, I just stood there, like, scared to death. Because they were kicking the, the ball. It seemed like it was going like this everywhere. Like, it was so fast. And, like, everyone was just, like, had so much power that I was just, like, what did I get myself into? Like, I was scared. Like, I just remember standing there, like, in, like, a 6v6 game, like, small-sided. Like, what is going on? And that's just, like, first day of preseason for everybody. Like, everyone's so hyped that yeah. the ball is just flying at 100 miles per hour. Um, but I quickly realized that I needed to be, like, way more technical. And, like, my first year was pretty much all about, like, me becoming, like, a way better, like, player technically. Um, cause my first year, um, like I didn't play ever. Um, I wasn't really contracted my first year. Not a lot of people know that. And then my next year I ended up like actually having like a real contract and like playing in games and act that's like kind of when I started. So it kind of felt like I needed the first year to get situated and like get on my feet. And then the second year is when I like started to play, like I started games, like, and I felt more on the team. Yeah, and looking back, obviously, uh, I mean, you want to start, you want to play right away, every player does, but uh, do you think that almost having that essentially like gap year of just training uh, helped you to prolong your career? Because if you get put into a game before you're ready for it, you know, you have two bad performances and you're done and you're not giving getting another chance. Yeah, like in the so. moment, I was like, what the heck, like I should be like contracted. And when I look back, I'm like, thank God I wasn't like, I was nowhere near ready to play, like, at all. So it, like, kind of helped get more comfortable, too. Because um, also it's just, like, super stressful. Like, even – so if you're not playing, it's stressful because, oh, like, I'm not playing. Like, what do I need to be doing to be playing? But then, like, when you're playing, like, you think, oh, since I'm playing, like, all that stress is going to go away. It's new stresses. Like, mm -hmm. if I don't have a good game, like – and people tweet at me. And, like, it's insane. I'm like, I've never been the type to, like – think ooh, people are gonna like notice me but like people will tweet at me after games and I'm just like okay I that's a stress too so like you kind of have to like get in the right mindset of okay I'm gonna just focus on me like focus on my growth and see where it goes because the fans here are amazing and like unreal but it also leads to like there are bad fans too like for the most part everyone's unreal here like so much love so much support but you'll have those couple that are just like <laughs> tweeting at you <laughs> yeah yeah no, and, and at the same time like obviously uh amazing fan support is awesome but when you do gain that much of a following it's just that many more people that expect you know success from it so yeah. it, it's a good and a bad thing for sure how uh how have you kind of learned to focus on yourself and not allow maybe like outside things to affect you in your game um I, well, I saw, like, a psychologist, like, a sports psych for a while um, last year, which, like, helped a lot just to, like, keep me focused on my path because there's so many outside things that can affect you. And, like, not playing or, like, outside stuff, like, someone tweeting at you, like, that's all just, like, things that are out of your control. So I focused on, like, just what I could control, and that was just showing up every day. Like, if I thought I had a great training or, like, if I thought I did good in the game, like, that was enough for me. Like, and hearing to what my coaches would say, like, if my coaches had good feedback from the game, then why am I going to listen to somebody else? So it was more of just focusing on me. And then I realized once I went in every day to practice with, like, just knowing, like, okay, Kelly, just do what you need to do. If you had a great training and you think you did great and if you feel good about your performance, like, that's enough for me. And it, like, changed my whole perspective on, like, playing. Like, I had, like, before I would be like, oh, I'm not playing. But then I was like, wait, like I'm having fun with my practice and like I'm genuinely enjoying my time here. So like that was like enough for me. Yeah. No, I, I really like that you said the, the part two about the, the sports psychologist because I think 
so many athletes kind of don't focus on on the mental side of it and at the end of the day like everyone can do almost the same things the same speed running the same passes i think yeah. that the mental side of it is what differentiates players from having success and ones that can't seem to make it in the in the end a lot of that yeah agreed like it definitely changed just like my outlook on everything and like i was like this there's a bigger picture to this it was hard because like i would have hard conversations with my parents too about it and like they'd be like why aren't you playing why aren't you playing and like as a parent, like, you just want to see your kid, like, excel. But, like, I was also, like, excelling without them even noticing. So, like, I was becoming a better player. Like, I was becoming a better person just because, like, it was just more – there was more to it than just playing. Yeah, absolutely. So then uh, talk about – so then you started playing more. Um, talk about the team, the success of that, that experience. Any yeah. So, well, my first year, we ended up winning the championship, which was, like, amazing. Um and then so that was the year I wasn't playing but then the next year is when I started playing more and like we've always had a really great team so it's kind of nice to like play with like really great players like I've been able to play with people that you dream about playing as a kid like Tobin, Sink, like Lindsay like it's just kind of crazy because you think like oh like you're playing all these stars but every day like you don't really see them as a star. You just see them as, like, a person, which is cool. Um, yeah. But it's just been, like, a really cool experience. And, like, I honestly didn't think I would probably play, like, this long. But it's just I'm having so much fun that, like, I don't want to stop yet. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, uh, I, I really enjoy watching Portland games when, uh, when they work with my time zone to watch. Uh, <laughs> but I – Every time I watch it, the the number of like legends that are on that roster is incredible. So I I can't imagine what it's like to get to train with them. And yeah, you have someone like Tobin and the moves that show. Yeah. I'm sure she doesn't training that she wouldn't even try in a game. They're just ridiculous at times. Yeah. My first year, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like she's me <laughs> every day. I'm like, all right. Like I'm the easiest person to meg because my legs are ginormous. So I'm like, okay, like it's just inevitable at this point. And that's when I finally learned, like, I'm going to get Meg no matter what. So I might as well embrace it. Just, just embrace it. That was actually a question uh, that we had someone write in was, what was the most embarrassing Meg that you've had in your career? Can you think of one? I don't even know if I've had, like, that embarrassing ones. Because I get Megs a lot. So, like, at this point, like, it's not really embarrassing to me anymore. Like, it's never been, like, in the box and then they, like, score a goal. It's more, like, on the outside. So, that's a hard one. But I do get Megs a lot. So, they kind of just, like, aren't important. Like, they don't stand out to me anymore. I I had one. I got Megs right outside the box. Um, <laughs> and I turned, like, real fast to try to recover it. <laughs> Did you fall? I didn't. I ran into my other center back was like coming to cover me, and I ran right into him. We just boom right into him. That is other. so funny. You're it like, was okay, so bad. Sorry. At least, at least the keeper made the save. He pushed it out wide for a corner, but my other <laughs> like, center back was like, "Dude, are you kidding me?" Afterwards, you're like, "Thank God, thank God, thank God." <laughs> exactly. Um, what was it like winning winning the championship then? Um, it was awesome. And like it being my first year, I was like, wow, like, are we gonna win this every year? Um, <laughs> meanwhile, like I'm not playing at all. So um, it was awesome. Like, it was just like a really cool experience. Um, we they flew us flew our whole team to Orlando, because that's where the game was. And so we got to like have this like unreal celebration, like after the game in Orlando. And that's like, been like, something like I'll never forget just because everyone on our team was just like so happy everyone was getting along like not that we don't ever get along but it's hard in a professional sport to like be like how you were in college like your best friends with your team in college like you just don't have that in pro sports so yeah. it was just like, like I remember this one time like we're all like everyone's drinking like everybody like their parents whoever's there our coaches and everyone's just like hugging each other on the dance floor and like it was just like the funnest, mo like funniest moment ever. Just seeing everybody like so happy. And then when we got back to Portland, like we even had like more celebrations. And it was just like cool because then we got to celebrate with our fans in Portland because our fans are just like, amazing. 
So we did something special for them. And so it was just like a really cool experience then be able to share winning with the fans who have been like unreal to us every year. So it was just like a really fun experience. And like, I'll never forget it. Do you have, do you have any, like, what's your favorite memory when you think about the fans at Portland? Cause I don't think a lot of, maybe if they don't watch Portland Thorns, they don't realize like how, how serious of fans you guys have. They're crazy. <laughs> like in the best way possible. Um, I'm trying to think that was a really cool moment. Um, hmm. Like, after every game, like, especially after a game, like, a big win. So, we go around the field, and then we end up where our fans are, and we, like, do, like, a little celebration with them after the games. And so, like, that's always, like, really memorable just because even if we lose that game, like, they're still cheering for us as loudly as if we won. So, just knowing that no matter what, like, they're always there. And we get to do um, a bunch of stuff with our fans. We do, <clears throat> like, a... Not like a meet and greet, but we do, like, if you're a season ticket holder, we do an event where they can come and we'll do, like, pictures, sing, like, autographs, uh, play cornhole with them. So it's nice to just, like, give back to them as much mm -hmm. as they give to us. Absolutely. Um, so, obviously, uh, after the last Women's World Cup, uh, there was a big uptick in support for women's soccer in the games. Uh, was it – as noticeable a difference for you guys because you guys already had such a, a strong fan base or was it kind of you know the same but just maybe a few more people at the games um for us it was like normal um because we get like on average twenty thousand a game so um i think our stadium only holds like four more thousand i don't know the number so we i mean we don't really sell sell out like sometimes i think maybe one time we have um, so it was like a norm, it was normal for us, but it was when we went to like every other place where it was just unreal. Like even Chicago, like Chicago had yeah. so many. And when we play at those places, like we're used to just the amount of fans they get, but then seeing like every other team and like how many fans they got, it was just like so cool to see because obviously people want to come to Portland and play like in front of our crowd, but for them to then have their own crowd like that was just cool for them too. Now, was it, was it hard? Because obviously when you're playing for Portland, yes, it's in front of a lot of fans, but the fans have your support. So then you're going to environments now and, and having play against fans that aren't supporting you. Was that uh, a big difference to get used to and comfortable with? Or was, are you able to block it out pretty easily? Um, I block things out pretty easily. Um, even in Portland, like, I don't – the only thing in Portland is, like, you just can't hear your teammates. So, like, you'll be, like, 10 feet away from each other and, like, screaming at each other, like, trying to talk. And, like, you just can't hear each other. Um, but other than that, I kind of, like, block a lot of it out. So, like, when we go somewhere else, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but at home, it's kind of cool because, like, even though I block it out, like, say, like, the ball just went out for out of bounds, like, I'm throwing it in. Like, our fans can kind of get close to us on one of the sides because they, like, have seats, like, on the field. And, like, it's just cool, like, hearing them saying, like, go, Kelly, like, it's just cute. <laughs> like, it makes you happy. You're like, oh, cool. Like, I have fans here. Yeah. No, that sounds awesome. What uh, what motivates you to continue to keep growing as a player? Um, Honestly, seeing, like, my teammates grow, too, helps, too, because you kind of just want to, like, all grow together. And, um, like, just – I don't know, I, I want to work hard for my teammates because a lot of them, I'm really, like, we're all really close. I would say our team's pretty close, which is, like, rare for a professional sport. So, like, just wanting to, like, be better for them. Like, I don't want to go into practice and, like, have a bad touch and it, like, ruin their practice. So it's just, like, I want to do best my best for, like, my teammates. And so that kind of just makes you, like, want to grow more and more every day. And just, like, knowing that, like, seeing your teammates and, like, where they're at makes you want to try to get to where they're at too and like you learn from your teammates and it's just like it's a cool environment to be around um because there's just so much to be like there's just so much to learn yeah so um you said that your your team is really uh close together close net what what's been the challenge with that now with uh with coronavirus has that been difficult to not be around them and be engaged <laughs> all the time or yeah um a lot of us live in the same apartment complex. So in the beginning, like, port so in Portland, it's not that bad here. So in the beginning, like, we were still allowed to go to parks and stuff. So we would still go, like, kick the soccer ball around and, like, do our running together. 
but that's just, that's when like you were still kind of allowed to be outside right. um so now it's really hard um because we usually would hang out every single day so it's weird but a lot of people um, ended up like going home so that also like it's not like they're here and like i can just like still go to their apartment um like a lot of people went home which is sad so it's just like sad being here and like not being able to see your friends like the other day i went to the store and like i saw like my coach's wife and i was just like this is sad like i miss seeing you guys every day and i miss being around my friends every day like in the locker room like i purposely would go to practice an hour or so early than we needed to be there just so like we can listen to music and hang out in the locker room so it's sad not seeing my friends every day because that's kind of why i play soccer still is like to be around my teammates every day and like now that i don't have that it's like i feel like a little empty inside 100 percent. no i know i know the exact same feeling uh just like being around my players and all not being allowed to right now feels yeah it just feels like a part of my my life is missing and it's not the same just like texting them or facetiming no. them it's it, it's not the same as like being on the field making memories together yeah for sure like practice is so much fun and like we only got like a little taste of it because i came like a month early so i was here like practicing with some teammates that were here so like i was here for a while but preseason we only had like four days of actual preseason before everything ended so it was just like we were finally like so excited to start and i was just like okay bye and we haven't been back since it's just kind of crazy because we were all like so like ready for season and now we're just like waiting yeah what uh what have you one of the questions actually on that line was someone's asking how have you stayed motivated and stayed ready for the season when there's so much uncertainty of if there'll be a season when there'll be a season that sort of thing um yeah that part's actually been really hard um we like talked about it too because like the workouts that we're doing it's like okay you have to go for like a longer run um like, parks here are closed, so you can't even go to a soccer field here, like, unless you're sneaking in. So we couldn't even – you couldn't even do, like, sprint workouts or, like, touches on the ball unless, like, it's – you're either hiding or, like, in a secluded area. So it's been pretty hard um, just because we don't know what we're doing and, like, we can't really do much because you're not allowed to do anything with groups either. So they're telling us, like, you could go do something with your roommate because you're already living with them. But it's been hard just because you want to stay focused and you want to stay like on top of your game, but it's hard to do that for a prolonged time. So it's hard to stay super, super fit when like you just don't know when season's going to start. And like obviously we're going to have a longer preseason because of this. Um, but like for me right now, it's just like getting in a workout every day that makes me feel good. Um, it's hard because you do like body weight stuff or we have dumbbells, but it's not like you're getting in like a good lift. So that's yeah. kind of hard too. Um, but mostly it's just like trying to do what makes you happy. And like some days, like I'll wake up and I'll be like, I really don't want to do a workout today. And I'll either do a lighter workout or I just won't just cause if I know if I keep doing <laughs> stuff, I don't want to be doing like, I'll go crazy. And I know it's okay that, I don't have to be doing something at all times, but even though it's my like job to be like working out every day, some days I'm just like, okay, I need a personal day. So that's kind of how I keep motivated. Um, some days I wake up and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna work out for like a long time. And yeah. then other days I'm like, uh, maybe I just need to do my workout and be done. So it really depends on the day and like my mood. Cause some days it's like nice out and I'm like outside like all day and I'll do like stuff with the ball um, and that's fine. And then there's some days where I'm just like, this sucks and it's hard. So I'm trying to maneuver through it too. Um, definitely keeping it though. We do bike workouts now. They've dropped off bikes for us, so we get to switch it up. Um, I'm learning how to become a distance runner. So <laughs> I go for like three mile runs and like I've never done that in my life. So like I'm trying um, to be better at like distance running, but it's just kind of weird. It's yeah, hard. it's such like uh, uncharted territory right now. And I think even, you know, what I see even with my players is if it was, hey, in three weeks, we're going to start training again as a team. I think it'd be easy for them to be motivated to like ramp it up to get back. Yeah. For it. But when it's like, well, 
Uh, it might be in a month. It might be in two months. It's hard to like stay in that game mode when there's and and you're by yourself. You know, it's not like you're training with a group to stay motivated, yeah. like bridges or something in the off season. Yeah. Um, however, however, I did see a guy run a marathon on his balcony. It was like thirty feet long, and he ran a marathon all day back and forth just on his balcony. Yeah. So, if you're looking at being a distance runner, that that could be something you could do one day. Yeah, no, see, like, once a week, I'll do my distance run, and, like, then I'm set. Like, I talked to my, like, strength conditioning coach about it, I was like, hey, like, you have a couple of these a week, and, like, I'm just, we're gonna have to switch it out for something, because I just, I'm not a distance runner, I'll do it every once in, a, like, once a week, maybe, but we're trying to figure it out, but it is the fact that, like, we just met on the end date, if we knew an end date, then it'd be easier for us to be like, okay, this week is how, how we're gonna work out and like we could ramp it up but like we just they keep pushing it back mm -hmm. so like say we're ready to like ramp it up and they're like jk like another month you're like okay well why am i gonna push myself this hard if i have a whole nother month where i can't do anything it's just like about balance at this point um and just like feeling out the bodies i know it's a great time for i've talked to a couple of my teammates like for resting their bodies um, I was having like adductor issues before this, so it's like kind of a blessing in disguise that like they get a break. Um, but it's still like you want to be on the field with your friends. Like I just want yeah. to play soccer. I don't want to go for a run. It'll be it'll be interesting because I think initially, um, like the level overall will be a little lower because everyone's had such a long break. But I think um, for a lot of people, long term, it might be actually a healthier thing to force their body to rest and and recover. Because as an athlete, it's like what you get a week here a week there and the rest of the year you're playing so mm -hmm. it'll be interesting um all right bridges program that you train at in the off season uh, uh question that we've been asking bridges players is uh don't include yourself in it but create your your ultimate five-a-side team uh, but without without mls players but why can't i be on it you can, but we we put you as like the the six sub coming oh, in. Oh, okay. The sub. Just so that you have like, so you can still. I mean, you can put yourself on and put one of them as the subs, but five uh, others not including yourself. Ah, uh, this is hard because it's like a mix between like friends and like people. Like, I'm pretty much friends with everyone there, but it's a good mix between friends. So like, when your team's off, you can like joke around on the side, but. Um, obviously See, I was, I never, I never had to, to be on the sideline because we were always winning so much. So. <laughs> Same. <laughs> um, obviously Eric Leonard been on my teams for like the past three years. So he's always won because he will play defense. And if I get beat, he will always defend for me, which is just nice when you play against really fast guys. It's like impossible to keep up with you guys. Um, I would have to say Tristan, Tristan, even though Tristan didn't play this last year, like He's like a close friend, so keep him on my team. Um, I need some goal scorers. Uh, it's hard without MLS players, but I would pick um, X. X always scored goals. He'd actually meg me to score goals. I'm like, okay, can you? Yeah, he's silky. Um, what is that? Three. And I need Perfect. two more. I need a good midfielder. Uh, I'm trying to think. Why didn't I think about this before? I was like, ooh, I know I'm going to say Eric. I know I'm going to say um, Tristan. Who else is there? I'm trying to think of everybody that I was with. Oh, I would pick Richard. Also. Okay. Yeah, new, a new one. Like, every now and then when he wasn't in his head. Um, who else? I need. I feel like, no, Tristan and Eric would play defense. Yeah, they would hold Richard. it down forward x would play forward and then obviously i think i should be playing okay put yourself in there um and then one more person hmm i'm trying to think i can't even remember everybody and then like two hours Ooh, later seth. i would pick seth okay okay even though he's been hurt this whole like off season but when he plays like i'm scared to play against him so i'd rather him be on my team I like that. The, <laughs> the choice of I don't want to play against them, so I'd rather play. Against them. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your What's your most memorable soccer moment? Um, my freshman year, 
it was the first round of NCAAs at Kentucky. We, in program history, we never made it past the first round. And I scored the winning goal. And it was, like, the coolest moment ever. Just because, like, everyone then piled on top of me. And it was just, like, cool to, like, break, like, I don't know. Since we never won the first round, it was, like, such a cool moment for us. And it was, like, a goal that I scored that, like, I will always remember. And now that I don't score goals anymore, it's kind of more important to me to, like, know, remember that goal. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's fun. Like, especially, I think, in college um, to, like, have success the team's never had in the history because, you know, years later they might not know your name, but the, the coaches or whatever are still telling your story of what you've accomplished yeah. for the school. Uh, favorite teammate and then uh, mm. favorite – U.S. Women's National Team player that you know? My favorite National Team player would probably be Emily Sonnet. She's so funny. Like, the things she comes up with, I'm just, how? Like, she's, her mind is just, like, always churning, and it's always funny. Um, and I miss her in Portland this year because we would always go on coffee dates and go to plant shops together, and we just, like, love plants, and... <laughs> Now that she's not here, like, no one really likes plants like I do. So that's a sad one. Um, and then now you're just the weird girl that likes plants on the team. Yeah. And, like, and like we would go buy nice plants. Like, I don't know. So that's a sad one. But love her. She's super funny. Like, just a great person in and out, too. She's kind of, like, intimidating at first, but she's one of the sweetest people I've ever met. And then favorite teammate now would probably uh, – I, like, I can't say a favorite. I like say, say, like, one so that you don't get any, like, you know, any teammates upset. You know, you don't want don't to rock the boat of the good chemistry. No. Okay, well, I'll just say this one because she's, like, so opposite of me. And, like, we get along so great. It's Britt Eckerstrom. She is a goalkeeper. And she is just, like, the most wild human. When I tell you, like, she hikes, she... She's like she's just so outdoorsy and so like it's so opposite of me like she will go on a hike like 20 mile hike and like camp on the side of a cliff in the middle of the night by herself like on her off days she just goes and hikes for miles and just stay like in her own little mini tent and i'm just like wow. yeah it's like the coolest thing like she's so awesome um and like so opposite of me but like the nicest like caring human but like just so and she's such an interesting person. Like, I've never come across her, like, anywhere in my life. And, like, I just am obsessed with her. I'm, I'm actually surprised that your coach lets you guys talk to the goalies. Usually they keep them sequestered by themselves. Well, they are, but obviously outside of soccer. <laughs> no, yeah, okay. our goalkeepers do their own thing, and we do our own thing. And then, yeah. you see them on You see them on game day at the, in the locker room. Oh, hey, I remember you. Oh, hey, yeah, like, you don't see each other all practice, except, like, then they pop in behind the goal when you're playing, like, 11 v. 11. You're like, oh, hey, like, nice to see you. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I don't know if I could do the goalie part. You're just by yourself with, like, two other goalies and a coach yelling at you. And I see the training they do, and, like, we'll look over, like, while we're warming up, and, like, they're doing wild shit. I'm just, like, they're, like, oh, jumping, yeah. like, balls being thrown at them. They're, like, jumping over stuff. Like, they're just so fearless. I slide like one time in training and I can get up all sore and they're just diving around for half an hour straight. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Uh, who is the, the most starstruck player that you've played against? When did you, have you had that experience? Mm -hmm. Against. Cause you're defending some big names in games. Yeah. Um, I think the actually one that I just thought was like, actually Alex Morgan was probably one. But another one is Sydney LaRue. Like, before she had her second baby, maybe, she, like, came back and played. Yeah. And, like, it was, like just seeing her play again, like, was just super cool to see. Um, so that was, like, a cool moment because um, she was still, like, doing amazing after having a kid. And it was, like, cool to see her come back because you don't really see that a lot in women's sports. It's, like, they have babies and come back. So that was the two of them because they're on the same team. And I was, like, okay, if I'm not marking one, I'm marking the other. Pick your poison. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, who do I pick? <laughs> but yeah, Alex Morgan was like a big one. But like, I, you kind of just like don't notice it in the moment. Yeah. Which is cool. Like your focus, but afterwards you're just like, whoa, like that was wild. Yeah. No, I, I, so I think it's so cool. You guys, you guys have played against some amazing players every game. 
you know, mm-hmm. and I, as a, as a player, not, or as a coach now, but not playing in a league with like national team players on every, every squad. I think that's such a cool experience to have. Yeah. It's super cool. Like no matter what team you're going against, you're getting like a big time player, which is super cool to see. Mm-hmm. So, uh, let's see. What else do we have? Um, what's your advice to young players? What's like, what's the biggest, the biggest takeaway looking back through when you were 15, what would you tell yourself now, you know, specifically to, to soccer? Um, I would say like, have fun with it. Like, don't take it super seriously. Um, Cause especially at 15, like you're at an age where like you should experience like high school also. Um, so like, don't think that at 15, if you're not like eat, sleep, breathe soccer, like that you won't get somewhere. Because everyone's path is, like, so completely different. Like, I was on track to, like, want to go pro, like, going into college. And, like, then I took a step back and, like, was like, ooh, that's not for me. And then I ended up changing. But I think also just, like, having so much fun with it is huge. Because that's what's going to keep you engaged and, like, wanting to play more and more. Like, if you're not having fun, you're just, like, your heart's not going to be in it. And you're not going to want to play anymore. And I think just having, like, other focuses. So, like, don't focus so hard on soccer all the time. Like, you need outlets. You need, like, go have fun with your friends. You need to just experience life, like, and not only soccer. Because if I, like, didn't go to college and get to, like, have fun with my friends and do all that stuff, like, I would not probably be playing soccer. Like, that's what keeps me sane. I know other people are different where they have to focus so much and, like, that's it. But, like, for me, like, I need to be doing other stuff in order to focus so much on soccer. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I think that's what I was just saying. You need that break away from it to have the energy to give 100% when you're there. Um, all right, random one that someone wants to know is, uh, how many tattoos do you have? Uh, um, I like feel like I count it all the time. Let me count real quick. It's always a count. You always have to. No one ever remembers. I want to say nine. Okay. They're all small, though. Like, very small. Hey, like, you don't have to justify. The <laughs> biggest one is probably this big. So, like, uh, most people don't even notice I have so many because they're all tiny. Like, most – I have, like, three on my fingers, which is kind of a lot. Um, But, yeah, they're all kind of small. Like, a couple are jokes. Um, <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I have, like – one like my friend gave me a stick and poke on my like butt cheek like it was a joke and my (laughs) like I mean it'll fade so I wasn't like too pressed about that but um I have both my brother's initials on my ankles um which is like really special to me that's like one of my most special ones and then my parents like wedding date is like a super special one to me um and then I have one with my sister on my side so like the ones that are like family related are like really special to me and mean the most to me and then i have some that are just like fun or you you went two extremes you went like very meaningful or like just complete joke yeah like no in between i like me and my best friend got like a lip tattoo as like a joke like (laughs) we're just like let's do something fun so like i don't even think if my mom is watching this like i don't think she knows but um (laughs) no one knows because me and my friend like didn't really tell anybody um But yeah, then I like super meaningful ones. Like I knew that I wanted to get something to rep like for my parents. I didn't know what. And then um, I decided to get like their wedding date on my finger because it's like it means like a lot to me. And I know they don't really think that I love them as much as I do. But they're always like, do you really like us? And I'm like, yeah. Like, why do you think I spend so much time with you guys? Um, But then the brothers one was actually funny because I like obviously like they're on my ankles it's their initials and I like sent them a picture after I did it and I was like oh like do you guys like it and they both were like that's fake like you didn't actually do that and I'm like no wait like I actually did they're like wait that's so cool like now I want to do it so it's just like I don't know like my family is like the most important thing to me so just like knowing that I did stuff for them it's like even if my parents don't like tattoos it's like my brothers loved my ankle ones um so it's kind of just, like, cool for me to, like, express to them, like, how much I need to them, even if I don't see them that often or, like, don't talk to them every day. That's the secret for young people that want tattoos. Get it with something to do with your family, and then your parents can't hate it as much because they exactly. it's meaningful, even if they hate tattoos. That's They're like, the oh, another finger tattoo, and I'm like, what is your wedding date? <laughs> they, can't, they can't fully hate it then. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, who's your Who's your biggest inspiration? Doesn't have to be soccer, just life in general. Um, this is interesting because we kind of did this in Portland. Um, it's my mom. Um, she just me and her kind of like hit heads a lot, and in high school, me and her didn't get along a ton, and like now we, I'd say we get along like pretty well. Um but I can't like be with her 24 seven. Um, Cause we're very different at the same time, but she just is like always support. So supportive and loving and does like everything to like make life better for me and my siblings. And it's just kind of cool to see. And the more I get older, the more I realize like how hard life is. And she's always made it seem like so easy and breezy. Like she gr raised four kids. Like my dad went, work and she raised us like all at home like she's a home mom and she like was superwoman like took us all to sports like I never had any issues with like going to a soccer practice or going to like she was just always there and so just knowing like how amazing she's been and like how easy she makes everything look is just like she we cook she cooked dinner every single night like weekends we would eat out but like every single night we had like a healthy meal on the table for us like in high school, like, I hated having, like, family dinner every night. But now, like, that's what I miss most, like, having family dinner every night. Mm -hmm. So just everything she's done makes me, like, want to be a mom and be, like, a mom just like her. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, you get, like, the – because my mom was the same of cooking, like, the dinner every night. And now yeah. it's just, like, me making dinner. I'm like, I don't want to cook tonight. And then I imagine <laughs> doing that for a family every single yes. night of, of ungrateful kids. Yes. Me being mean to her, she's cooking me, like, this nice dinner that I asked for. She'll be like, what do you want for dinner? Or, like, she knows I don't like potatoes, so when I come home in, like, the off-season, like, she doesn't make potatoes because she knows I don't like potatoes. So it's just, like, the little things, like, you know? Like, she, I don't know, she just sacrifices so much, and, like, it makes me want to be more, sac like, able to sacrifice for other people. Absolutely. That's awesome. Glad I asked that question. Also, looks like your dad and sibling are in here, so they they got to hear your story. So that's exciting. Might They're keep going like in the comments. So might get a phone call afterwards. I know. <laughs> um, last question: If you weren't playing soccer, what would you be doing? Good question. Um. So I have a degree in communication, so I kind of do marketing. I did marketing on the side in the off seasons, so I assume I would be like doing some sort of sort of marketing. Um, I would want to do sports marketing or marketing in like a big firm that does like a bunch of different accounts. Um, in the off season, I work for um, a small marketing company that like I love. Like the people there are great. It's like my neighbor. Um, known her forever. She actually played pro soccer, so they're super great with flexibility for me like I could do half days I could do full days and so that's been like eye-opening for me but it also made me realize that like I want to be downtown Chicago like at a like at a big place with like sports they do like catering which is like one thing where I would want to do like sports because I'm so into sports um because so like more like sports type stuff but I would want to be downtown like living downtown with like maybe like a couple of my friends and just you know, like being down there because I love Chicago. I love Portland too, but I really love Chicago. You're a shy girl, right? I am. <laughs> um. All right. I will. I'll put your link up to your Instagram. Anything else you want people to know? Follow you on anything or? No, I mean, this has been great. I've never done this before. Um, I was telling my friend yesterday that this is like really pushed me out of my comfort zone. I've never done like anything talking about soccer, like my path. Um, I think a lot of people think they have like this version of me in my path and like, it's completely different. Like people meet me and they think one thing of me. And then once they get to know me, they're like, wow, like you're so different than I thought you were. So it's kind of cool to like get my story out for people. Um, and at times I've been like embarrassed of my path and like that I wasn't playing my first year of contract, but now that I'm, like, getting older, like, I want people to know that, like, if you don't play your first year, like, that doesn't mean you should quit. So it's just nice yeah. to, like, get everything out there. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great story. Um, and I agree with that. I think uh, a lot of people have preconceived notions of how a career has to unfold. And then when you start talking to, to players, almost everyone's story does not look 
that way and is never as easy as how people dream it to be. There's always exactly. challenges. And obviously you've had, you know, multiple different ones with the, the thyroid, with the ACL, with not playing your first year um, or contracted, you know. So I think, it's, I think it's really good to be able to show younger players, especially that it doesn't have to be, you know, sunshine and roses uh, to make it and not to, to lose heart, and, you know, through that trials. Yeah, exactly. It's nothing like sunshine and roses. <laughs> At times it is, but it's hard. Yeah, honest just said I made five hundred a month in my first contract. Yeah. I mean it's a it's a grind the first the first couple of years until you can get, you know, a foundation. But all right, thank you for doing this. Everyone give Kelly a follow. Watch her getting magged out in Port and Thorns. So okay, not okay. too much. No, no. Don't tell people that. Like <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I was just kidding. Now, good luck, though. I uh, hope you guys' this season starts soon, and we can watch you defending like a beast in front of the Port and Thorn fans. Yes, I hope so. We need it to start soon. We're going crazy. Absolutely. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yep, bye. Bye.